Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Thursday, April 26 at 11.48 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. What you're looking at is Saco Jarima erupting today three times, which we have here in time lapse, thanks to Volcano YT. Very impressive explosion here. Uh, I was expecting to see some plasma discharge, but the fireworks are impressive nonetheless. And I'll leave you links to this and we will get on with the video. Melting Arctic sends a message. Climate change is here in a big way. Look at these guys on these melting puddles. The ice is all melting away. Scientists have known for a long time that as climate change started to heat up the earth, its effects would be dramatic. Unfortunately, they didn't check the actual data, which we're looking at right now, the sea ice thickness for 25th of April, 2018. It has raised over 2,000 cubic kilometers over the last two years, which is bringing it well into the multi-decadal average, going all the way back to the early 2000s, 2004 here. And you can see we're going with a double spike. Here's the second spike, and we have not reached peak ice this year, which we would expect, as predicted, extending into a glacial cycle here. We want to see this black line pass 2014 levels, and we're going to see record levels of ice remain. Now, if you, want, if you listen to the article, which I'm going to leave you links to, they're claiming that the multi-year ice is going away, and they use a time lapse. The only problem is the time lapse stops a little too early. So let's go quick look at the time lapse. And what they show you is that this uh, bright white ice here, the high albedo ice, quickly goes away as we move through 2009 into 2010 and then 2011 and 12. This multi year ice becomes less and less. So let's just do the run through here. Here's 2008, here's 2009. You can see the ice is becoming, it's going away, just like Al Gore said in 2010 and 11. Oh my God, there's no more ice. The only problem is that global warming ended in 2012, and look what's happening to the ice. It's building again. That bright white multi-year <laughs> multi ice is building again, and that's what they didn't tell you. And here are the facts. These red areas are over 15 foot thick. The white areas could be up to 20 feet thick. This is now all multi-year ice. The Beaufort Gyre in this area, which was melting ice, is now cooling. It is not getting that warm water influx, and the Arctic is going to continue to build epic amounts of ice as the years progress. These are the facts, and here's the data. There is 2,000 cubic kilometers more ice than the last two years. So is the Arctic melting? Nope. It's growing. Let's talk about frost and freeze warnings in North Texas, the Oklahoma panhandle here, southwestern Kansas Dodge City, two nights in a row. Special report coming out of South Bend, Indiana, WSBT 22 forecast the summer of 2018 to not be too spectacular. After an incredible winter, spring has barely shown itself. In fact, the spring is the coldest start to the season ever. On record, unlike the past winter, this current spring, it does not look like the upcoming summer will feature multiple broken records. The only broken records we saw are snow records. 91, 93.1 inches of snow accumulation officially in South Bend. It was incredible lake effect snow season with Laporte picking up 135 inches of snow. That's over 10 feet. The only stat that's impressive the coldest temperature this winter was negative 15, and that was one of 12 days with sub-zero temperatures, nearly twice the normal days below zero. Overall temperatures in December through February ended up 1.1 degree below average. That does not sound like a warming world. Heads up. Let's check the GFS model, which is showing heavy snow in upstate New York in May. Let's just back it up here. We'll take a look for yourself. The models are showing snow in northern Ontario moving to the east through the weekend and upstate New York getting snow all the way into Monday. North Jersey? More snow? This is just a model, folks, but look what happens up 
in Northern Ontario. I'm sorry, Ontario. You have two events, a May 7th event dumping up to 16 to two feet of snow up in Northern Ontario over the next two weeks. We have heavy snows predicted in the Southern Rockies and moderate snow in all the higher elevations in all of the West Coast. This is much needed moisture. So we're not gonna fret about it. But there is snow in upstate New York showing up in May. And I'm pretty sure the apples are blooming. This type of event would be very devastating to crops here in North Jersey. So we'll watch this closely as May progresses. These models are going to change. Flash flood kills 10 teenagers in the desert as unseasonable storms hit Israel. These kids are totally fluxed. Following days of heavy rain and strong winds that killed two people in Israel and Palestine on April 25th, flash floods claimed the lives of 10 more people on April 26th. The Israeli police said that an unseasonal storm totally fluxed the southern desert on April 26th, producing a flash flood that hit a group of 25 more teens that are smoking pot and now drowning. It's ironic that the riverbed in the southern Dead Sea area killed 10 of them. The remaining 15 were rescued, but seven sustained serious industries. Industries. Injuries. Heads up. Heavy rains, flooding, killing 72, displacing 210,000 across Kenya over the last four weeks. Dams are reaching critical dangerous levels and buses are falling off the dams. Whew. Scott just got here, our producer. He's going to be spending the week and he had to drive across a similar dam today. But he didn't capsize like this bus. Now, heavy rains and floods affecting Kenya since March have displaced almost a quarter million people, killing 72, injuring 33 across the country. They are totally fluxed in Kenya. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, we'll get to that. National Weather Service, new national 24-hour rainfall record ever recorded potentially in Hawaii. We recorded on this major flooding event. It's been raining in Hawaii for months completely washing all of the fertile soil into the ocean. But that storm, preliminary data downloaded from a remote rain gauge in North Kauai, indicates a rainfall during the event of 49.69 inches in 24 hours. That is... <laughs> Heads up. That's a lot of rain. Solar activity has a direct impact on Earth's cloud cover. That's why they're fluxed. As cosmic rays increase over your lifetime, it's not going to stop. Here's 13% just over the last year and a half in central uh, California. Cloud nucleation occurs. I'm going to leave you links to these papers. This is coming from what's up with that. A new paper, The Missing Link Between Cosmic Rays, Clouds, and Climate Change on Earth. This is Svensmark's work. And here I'm going to leave you an excerpt from the paper, Cosmic Rays, Clouds, and Climate. The most profound questions with the most surprising answers are often the simplest to ask. Why, if we were in a warming world, would the Arctic ice be growing so rapidly? <laughs> because we're not warming. And why would millions of Americans think there's a covert spraying operation happening simply because there's more cloud nucleation behind planes? And Heinrich Svensmark, a friend of the channels, explained it all. He was all but obliterated from the narrative during the global warming hysteria of the 90s. But thankfully, his persistence in his scientific endeavor won out. And now, as of 2017, the work of Heinrich Svensmark is being embraced by the mainstream and being proven at CERN. So what happens for the layman out there? The most obvious way that you cool a planet is by increasing albedo. The albedo effect happens when things are white on the surface and they reflect the sun's rays back into space. These include two major things on our planet, snow and clouds. Now, cosmic rays are increasing because the magnetosphere is waning due to a magnetic pole flip and also because our sun is shutting down simultaneously. These are independent events that are going to wreak havoc on the surface of the planet and our climate. The science is clear, and this is just a piece of the puzzle. A breakthrough in the understanding of how cosmic rays from supernova can influence Earth's cloud cover and thereby the climate is published in the Journal of Nature by Anrik Svensmak. The study reveals how these ions produced 
in energetic cosmic rays raining down through the atmosphere helps the growth and formation of cloud condensation nuclei. And that means more clouds. More clouds mean more albedo. More albedo means more cooling. Now these cloud condensation nuclei are the seeds necessary for forming clouds in the atmosphere. The nuclei changes affecting the properties of clouds in actually forming clouds that you've never seen in your life. High wispy clouds, contrails that are persistent emanating from commercial airlines, etc. And these reflect the sun back into space. I'll leave you links to all that. The second largest earthquake in modern South Korean history tied to people. And it's not soil and grain, guys. It's the geothermal plant. It's not our geothermal greenhouse either. So all these idiots that are claiming they're going to drill into Yellowstone and capture the heat and save the planet. Well, they did it here in South Korea, and they created the second largest earthquake ever in modern South Korean history. So that's what people do when they screw with Gaia. Heads up. Seismic update. Seven, uh, we have a 4.7 off the coast of Ecuador. Mid-ocean ridges booming. 5.0 here. 249 kilometers east of Bouvet Island. We have some movement here in Chile that is 24 hours old almost. 5.0 here in Argentina. But no other quakes in note. Small rumbler here off the Oregon coast, which is being reported in the mainstream here. 3.8, 108 kilometers west-northwest of Barview, Oregon. Vanuatu to the 11,000 residents that were returned to the island of Ambe after it awoken. And we uh, reported on that about five months ago. And I said that t bringing these people back to the island is a bad idea. And they did it anyway. And here they're taking them back off the island. Huh. They should have listened to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. The difficulty now is that it's the rainy season. Mudslides are hampering the efforts. Officials are now attempting to evacuate all 11,000 residents from Vanuatu's Ambe Island again as it's erupting. Flooding and mudslides from recent rainfalls have made evacuations more challenging and even impossible. These residents have experienced respiratory problems, multiple deaths, crop loss, and just insanity after the government sent them back here. So, do you think the government has your best interests at heart? Mm. The Oppenheimer Ranch does. Volcano in southwestern Japan erupts again. This is Ayo, Ayoyama. Apparently it blew up and they have really bad photography here. Miyazaki Koyoro, a volcano in southwestern Japan, erupted again on Thursday, the Japan Meteorological Agency said, and barely said anything else. The agency said that Mount Ayo, one of Kirishima group of volcanoes, which is erupting in force and killing skiers, stopped after it spewed a plume of ash the previous day for the first time in 250 years. The latest eruption occurred 6.15 p.m., the agency said. Obviously, this is very poorly translated. Worldwide news, volcano update, Reventador, Dukono, Sakurajima, Sabankayo, Suanosima, Popo, uh, Suanosima exploded today. Sakurajima erupted. I showed you the footage coming from Volcano YT. We'll go back to it and look at it a little bit more. Look at that little shooter blast out of there. Let's go back. Take like a cannon. Little lava fountaining. I'll leave you links to this. Go check them out. They have uh, footage in a condensed form of all the eruptions today. You can see Suanosima, you can see Mount Ayo, you can see Sakurajima. You can see all the eruptions because at Volcano YT, they download them for you so you can just go check out the eruption, which is totally badass. So I highly recommend you go over there and give them a like, send them Oppen tell them Oppenheimer Ranch sent you. Let's talk about some nonsense coming out from the media today. <coughs> if it downloads ever... And then we'll get to some science and we'll close it up. My boyfriend only wants one kid because of climate change. Is he being ridiculous? Well, if he believes the earth is getting warmer, yes, because he didn't do his homework. 
But if he only wants to have one children because the earth is getting warmer, you should really take him probably to see a therapist. Um, clearly, as the population decreases rapidly as we go into these changing times, more humans will be necessary in the right places. If you're not in the right place, please don't have children. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, evolutionary processes and reversals of the Earth's magnetic field. This is coming out in 1967 where there was already a link between magnetic pole flips and evolution on the planet. Do your own homework. Milankovitch cycles and their effects on species in ec ecological and evolutionary time. Another link to cyclicity in the planet as far as evolution is concerned. And this all relates to the cosmic cycle of catastrophe that is associated with our predictions, the coming grand solar minimum, and many other cosmic cycles driven by the sun and the cosmos, not by man. You are here entering another 1,000 year repetitive drop off, which ends the empire. And what that means cosmogenically is that cosmic rays are on the increase. And according to scientific papers that I'm sharing with you currently, that doesn't bode well for evolution. It, in fact, creates mass extinctions and drives evolution. So if you're thinking you're going to be sticking around for a while, we might be changing in the near future. Oxygen also escapes from the Earth during geomagnetic reversals. And this paper discusses the implications to mass extinction. So geomagnetic field reversals substantially weaken the protection of the atmosphere. Solar wind energizes more oxygen ions to escape when these geomagnetic fields are weakened. Oxygen escape may explain the drop of atmospheric levels during mass extinctions. The cause relationship between reversals and mass extinctions should be many to one. The simulated oxygen escape rate based on knowledge of Mars supports the hypothesis. And if you guys know, Mars doesn't have much oxygen. In fact, we can't breathe there. But the Earth has been breathing for quite some time, so... Don't get your panties in a bunch. Just read the paper. This paper is coming out from somewhere in Russia. The entire full text is only available in Russian. But if you come here and read the abstract, this is the most recent paper that is explaining the threats imagined and real of the Earth's magnetic field reversal. And what it says here is some good news as well as bad news. The good news is that the cosmic ray flux increase by no more than a factor of three in our future, implying that the radiation danger does not exceed the maximum permissible dose. However, it will be at the maximum permissible dose. So we might see some mutations happening in our lifetime, but it won't kill us. <laughs> Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. There were no booms tonight. So you can share this with all your boom-free friends. Be safe, everyone.